Welcome, Stacy. It's great to see you there today uh, with us to talk about biophilia and urgent biophilia, especially in the context of military uh, veterans, returning combatants, and so forth. And uh, really appreciate the work that you do at Sierra Club for veterans as well as for, for the outdoors in general. Um, could you introduce yourself and what you do, including your military background, for the benefit of uh, the members of this course? Sure. Really excited to be here. My name is Stacy Baer. I'm the director of Sierra Club Outdoors. We get out 250,000 people into the outdoors every year through a vast network of about 5,000 volunteer leaders. Uh, and we do that through large, three large program umbrellas. Uh, our local outings. Um, our Inspiring Connections Outdoors, which is focused primarily on youth who may not have otherwise have an opportunity to get outdoors. Uh, and that's in 55 uh, cities and towns across the country. And we just added a group that's working with the Florida National Guard, which we're really excited about. Yeah. And then our military, Sierra Club Military Outdoors, uh, which all told we get out about 13,000 military service members a year. Um, through specific military and veteran work with Sierra Club Military Outdoors, uh, with our ICO work, uh, as I mentioned, and then also with local out with local outdoors. Uh, my own background: I was a I got out of the army for the second time in 2007 after a year in Iraq, and I was a captain in civil affairs. I was in the military the first time from 2000 to 2004 as a military intelligence officer, and I received my commission from the University of Mississippi. Uh, got out in 04 and then was recalled at the end of 2005 uh, out of the Individual Ready Reserve. Well, thank you very much for your service, Stacey, uh, and for what you're doing now for veterans. Can you give us a, an example of the kinds of activities that veterans would be engaging with uh, through your program? Yeah, so the Sierra Club has a really long history with the military. We like to talk about our first veterans outing leading to the creation of our first national park when John Muir took Teddy Roosevelt out for three days in what was then a California State Park and is now Yosemite National Park. And that model has more or less stayed the same. We restarted very focused military work in 2006 and since then have gotten about 50,000 service members out through specific military programming. Um, and those numbers are on the rise every year. A lot of our programming uh, involves multi-day trips in the outdoors, getting people outside and allowing nature to be a co-facilitator in um, we like to call it healing. I think a lot of veterans, myself, when I first came home as well, I wasn't looking for healing, but I was looking for continued adventure, continued camaraderie, a continued sense of purpose, and the outdoors provides that, whether it's rafting, climbing, uh, a multi-day hike, or our leadership training, which a number of veterans have taken advantage of so that they can get other members of their community, whether they be veterans or youth, out in their communities. Hmm. Well, you know, I've written a, a little bit about uh, this concept of urgent biophilia, which is related to this larger construct of biophilia, which I know you're familiar with from other conversations with you. Uh, urgent biophilia basically uh, implying that there's something after something traumatic happens to a person or a community that creates a, an initial urge to uh, affiliate or to express love and attraction for nature, for the outdoors. Uh, are you seeing that kind of thing with, with the uh, veterans that you're working with in your programming? Certainly, and that was also my own experience coming home from Iraq. If you've read some of what I've written, uh, or I, I've had the good fortune of partnering with some really great band, brands like the North Face, Pret Helmets, and Sunto watches, and, and they've helped to tell that story and the veteran story. And, and I oftentimes refer to climbing as really saving my life when I came home. And I think that's really, really true. But when I first came home, two years before I started climbing, I went on a big two week surf trip in South Africa and it was off season. And so I was really able to be more or less by myself in the ocean, um, all along this really beautiful coast, um, just east of Cape Town, all the way up um, to J Bay Jeff and Jeffrey's Bay. And I think that allowed me to hold on long enough until I found the rock. And I think the challenge with it is on the one hand, we absolutely, we absolutely need to do more research and understanding of what these urges are like, um, urgent biophilia, which is a great title, and I think it's really, really key uh, and really true. And on the other hand, I think sometimes, especially with veterans and other people who have been traumatized, um, sometimes that level of knowledge, we know things, if we know things intellectually, we think that we maybe can skip out on actually doing them. And so we, we miss the emotional understanding of the outdoors. 
And uh, one of the big challenges I think in the veteran community is we're so results oriented that oftentimes we look at the outdoors as achievement as opposed to the outdoors is relationship building. And even relation, building that own relationship back with yourself as to who you are and, and a relationship with nature. And so I think in our rush at times to get to connect people back to nature, we instead connect people back to achievement orientation and that's not really helping. Um, and so it's a real careful balance of what you have to do and making sure you're providing, you know, a therapeutic out, uh, out, output and opportunity for people while at the same time not forcing it too much because then, you know, it's like, like I remember the, you know, when my, when my first close friend died long before I was in the military, you, you know the stages of grief, so you force yourself through them really quickly. Mm. And I think it could we, we could face the same challenge. We're understanding now that urgent biophilia, I think, is a real thing. We've got to get people outdoors. But if people know they need to get outdoors and then go out for five days, are they just counting off the time for the achievement? And, and I think that's going to be um, a really good challenge as we move forward, is both, one, ensuring people know about urgent biophilia, ensuring people know it's, it's it's a real thing and that we've got to do it and you've got to get outdoors but then also making sure people can make nature their own and have their own experience um, and that's one of the things we work really hard at the Sierra Club is to try and minimize expectations for what people are going to find in nature so that they can have their own story um, I don't want people to have the exact same experience I did in nature right well, I appreciate the setting aside of the achievement or results or goal-oriented uh, sort of outcomes, which are basically, you know, pounded into your, into your head in the military context, for better or for worse. But could you talk a little bit about the other benefits? You, know, you don't want to force those benefits on people, but what's the menu look like? What, what's the sort of uh, kinds of benefits you've seen out of your observations and your own experiences for those outdoor experiences or nature contact? Right. I mean, the benefits are real, and I think – by allowing people to frame their own, you know, we want to frame a broad experience and then allow people the opportunity to, to create within that. And I mean, what happens, I think, I think the first thing that happens is a sense of rebuilding confidence. And yes, I can do this. And I'm still valuable beyond and outside of my unit. I think the second thing in that confidence is finding a new unit, right? I mean, when you go camping or climbing or hiking, um, other people do different things in the camp, and so you feel your, your place in the team. Um, the third thing is, is really a sense of awe, and I think that's actually probably the primary thing that happens, just the sense of beauty, that there's still beauty, that there's still wonder, and that you can still connect to this really wonderful place. And, and I think in America, because of our public land system, um, that can translate into an understanding that our public lands are our public democracy, right? I mean, it's within our public lands, the soil, the physical soil, the trees, the water represent the best that our country has to offer in terms of its ideals. And, it, and it's very pragmatic and you can touch it, which is pretty awesome. Um, so I definitely think awe is a big one. And then I think the fourth thing is that as people move through the process, you get to be more than a veteran. Um, and it's, being a veteran is always going to be core to who I am. But I'm, you know, I can introduce myself as a climber, as a skier, as a surfer, as a fly fisherman. Um, and I think it's good because it gives us those types of identities. And then the fifth thing, which is also really key, is that you meet other people in the outdoors and you learn that, you know, all veterans aren't the same. And as a veteran, you learn that non-veterans have a lot to offer you, have a lot to give, have, and, and maybe even have traumas that are very similar to your own. They may have come about those traumas very differently than you did, but they have traumas. And um, for me, that was really, really exceptional to recognize that I wasn't alone in my trauma. And that helped to build trust with non-veterans, which, you know, really transferred over a lot in, into every aspect of my life. Because even if I was like in a subway car in New York City and freaking out because it's really crowded, you know, I could tell myself that there's somebody else on that subway car that probably is a backpacker or a climber or a hiker. Um, and, and that was calming just to know that. Yeah. Well, well, finally, Stacey, um, you know, more broadly thinking about the public lands and the sort of partnership in our, our own history as a country with the civic component and in the great outdoors and the concept of wilderness, um, what do you think we can learn more broadly for society uh, and civic ecology by the way that urgent biophilia is expressed among returning veterans? What is their, the, the larger message, message for society for us? That's a really big question. I, I don't know if I can have a snappy response for that. I think, I think the larger response 
that America needs to recognize, there's a few points to that, right? I mean, one is, is that we as veterans, especially in this country, are you as a community. They're, they're, the distinction we create is largely a false one. Um, what's good for us is gonna be good for you. So use us as a pilot because maybe we seem to be the most at risk or publicly at risk population. The second is, is really access to, to the outdoors. And I think we don't always do a good enough job in supporting access to the outdoors. Maybe that's public transportation. Maybe that's making sure that there's gear lockers available for people so that they can have and, and rent gear out. Maybe it means that universities need to open up their uh, rec programs to the community to really be a community resource. Um, but I also think it really highlights the value of our public lands. Like we absolutely need to protect our public lands. And, we need to do it in a way that they're not loved to death, but we also need to make sure that people are aware of their public lands, that they're getting outdoors. And when people say, well, how can I say thank you to a veteran? I don't have money to give to a veteran's cause. Um, I, I don't know where the veteran facilities are in my hometown. You know, my thoughts are one, we'll research, figure out where they are, but two, exercise your rights. Um, and in terms of urgent biophilia, we all have it. I mean, the world is a very traumatic place anymore. And, and that's a shame, but we can find empathy and we can, we can help to support positive outcomes in the face of trauma by getting outdoors. So I think more policy decisions that are focused on getting people outdoors, everything from ensuring that kids have recess at school to solid environmental education, um, all the way to making sure that we have protected lands that if nothing else, you can go stare at and see the mystery that's there. Well, thank you very much, Stacey. Thank you again for your service, and thank you for your friendship and your uh, willingness to be here with us today. And I, I wish you well on this, this uh, fall season and hope to see you soon out there in, in the west part of this country. Thanks again, Stacey. Thank you, and I appreciate the research that you're doing, uh, some fantastic work that's coming out of Cornell that uh, has tidball associated with it. So it's exciting <laughs> to be able to, to talk with you today. Okay, thanks. Take care. Thanks. Bye.